Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Let's Play Blood Moon, where we're at Thirsk Mead Hall. Where we discovered the lost missionary, Marisa, who had been locked in a room upstairs by Eric the Unworthy and, and routinely abused, and it was kind of grim, honestly. But he's dead now. We killed Eric, so she's just going to hang out in Thirsk for a while until we're able to uh, head back south to Fort Frostmoth and take her with us. Because right now, we don't want to be going to Fort Frostmouth. We're supposed to be going to the Skull Village up to the north in order to search for Captain Carius or search for someone who might know what's happened to Captain Carius. Which, grand scheme of things, is of slightly more importance than this lost missionary who is no longer in any danger now anyway. So she's going to stay here for now and hopefully I'll remember to pick her up on the way back south again. And like, you, you look at like fresh snow like that and I just have this uncontrollable urge to just jump all over it and put footprints in it <laughs> this is the smith we were told about in the previous episode as well by the chief of Thirsk might have a word with him ooh a fine selection of stuff you have sir hey old traveller I'd tell you about my wares but by now you're probably well aware of my craftsman craftsmanship my weapons are unmatched, and I make a lot of fine bear and wolf armor that many of Salt Sam's nods are so fond of. I must admit, though, I'm growing weary of patching together the same old wolf and bear pelts. In truth, I long to test my abilities and make some custom fur armor using the pelts of Salt Sam's more exotic animals. Right, this is the... <laughs> God, look at that wolf helmet. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the eyes. It's the eyes that just do it for me. I it looks so weird. Anyway, yes, I mentioned this guy in a previous episode as well, I think. But yeah, I was going to collect loads of bear pelts until I realized that this guy doesn't actually make bear armor for you. He makes custom bear armor, which is a different thing. Roaming the wilds of Solstheim are seldom seen elusive species of wolf and bear. They're called snow wolves and snow bears because of their white fur. It is said that the pelts of these animals have innate magical qualities that help guard against Solfsheim's brutal frost and snow. Just think of the armor I could create with such materials. If you're able to provide me with the pelts and enough gold, I would gladly make you a set of custom snow wolf armor or snow bear armor. Now this was a thing in the expansions of this game. In both of the expansions they added an NPC who could forge armor for you. This guy is obviously the Blood Moon version. But in Tribunal, there was there was an NPC who could forge you uh, adamantium, ebony, or glass armor, I think, depending on what you brought him. Which is interesting, because I remember when I very, 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 very first played Morrowind, and I remember killing some uh, netches and harvesting netch leather from them. I ended up hoarding the stuff, because even back... Then, in 2002, many years before Minecraft came out and showed that every game had a crafting system in it, uh, even then I was looking at the next leather and thinking, surely I must be able to make leather armor with that. And it turns out I was completely wrong. You make potions with next leather, which is super intuitive. Thanks, Bethesda. Uh, but I think, and I think I was probably not the only person who had that reaction to, thing, to collecting things like ebony and glass and and uh, what have you in the game and that's why in the expansions they added NPCs that could actually take those raw materials and turn them into armor for you but anyway uh, snow wolf armor would be more interesting to us because we're a light armor person so it's simple you bring me those snow wolf pelts and gold and I'll make a piece of custom light snow wolf armor I even have a special method of treating the fur that will enhance the natural protective properties against frost Whatever you order will be ready in 24 hours. Take the scroll. It lists my prices and requirements for each piece of armor. If you're interested and you have enough pelts and gold, talk to me again. I'll fire up my forge and you'll have your new armor in a day. Custom fur armor price list has been added to your inventory. Let's have a little butchers at it, why not? I Whatever he crafts is not going to be as good as the Savior's hide, of course, but, you know could get something that might be better than these bone mold pauldrons I'm wearing for example or these glass greaves or, or what have you so might be worth looking into and, and a new helmet perhaps so uh, 
let's see. Where is it? That's the song of Uncle Sweetshire. Which I have two copies. There we go. Custom fur armor. You call yourself a hunter? Now prove it. Hiding in the wilds of Solsheim are the elusive white snow bears and snow wolves. It is said their fur can protect against the most frigid cold. Kill these beasts, claim their pelts, and you can be the proud owner of custom fur armor crafted by Bryn Yolfer. Imagine beautiful light white fur armor made from the pelts of Solsheim's mysterious snow wolves and snow bears. Never before have I forged such armor because nobody has been skilled enough to bring down enough of the beasts. Could you be the first? Kill the beasts, bring me their pelts and enough gold, and I'll craft the best light armor found on Solsheim or anywhere else. A bold claim, sir. Materials and price list. Snow bear armors. Do, 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 do. Snow wolf armors. So you, for a curious, you need five snow wolf pelts and 6,000 gold. Yeah, this is not going to be cheap or quick, getting enough snow pelts for, for like a full set. We don't necessarily need a full set, though, because I'm not going to need the curious, because I've got the savior's hide, obviously, but... Um, a pair of pauldrons, that would be four snow wolf pelts and two grand. Maybe if I wanted gauntlets as well. And greaves. And a helmet. I don't need boots either, because I've got the boots of the apostle. So... Yeah. Well, well, if we see snow wolves, I will endeavour to remember to loot them. And since we're relatively high level, they might actually spawn quite a bit as well. So, you know, you never know. But then again, the creatures mod might mess with the spawn rate of them as well and stuff like that. So who freaking knows, honestly? All I know is that there is a Reekling and I don't want to fight him. Let's not go near him. Let us instead head towards the Skarl village. Which is roughly in this direction somewhere. I can't quite see because there's trees in the way. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I can see it. I can see a roof of a building. That's a whole bunch of them over there. Let's try and avoid. <coughs> By going this way. I'm going to need to stop and get a drink fairly soon. My throat is getting very dry at the moment. Another bristle back. Thankfully without a rider though, so less of a problem. Yeah, pretty good view from up here. And it's a nice clear day as well. It's a lot of trees, isn't it? It's a proper forest, isn't it? The uh, Hare Stang Forest, or whatever it's called. Because Vanilla Morrowind doesn't really do forest. At all. Uh, uh, really, There's, there are no actual forests in Vardenfell, are there? So, it makes a nice change. Right. Welcome to the Skull Village, of course. Address the elephant in the room here. Again, it's surprisingly lovely weather up here. I'm also thinking I'm going to take off this... I know that Star Vision, because it's... just making some of the snow look a bit weird. Right, I suppose we'll do what you usually do in an RPG, which is walk up to the first person you see in the town and engage them in conversation. Engar Ice Man. Your honor, don't press your luck. You are not of the skull. Speak with Thurston Thurst Hartfang in the Great Hall if you have reason to be here. He is our leader and will deal with you. I see. And that is a skull honor guard in full. Uh, Nord male, although for some reason the your pauldrons are completely honor. screwed Don't up. Press your luck. What is going on with that? They are not meant to look like that at all. Very strange. How on earth has that happened? I don't know. They're all like that, aren't they? Yeah. Huh. Strange. Well, anyway. The Great Hall. 
it's incredibly dark in here. Let's just give the HDR a moment to adjust. I say it's incredibly dark. I suppose it's not that dark. Don't I'm just stand about. playing this in front of bay windows during the daytime, so the glare means I can't see much. But there we go. I think it's adjusted a bit now. That is a stuffed cliff racer. Where'd you get that? Can I have one of those? I want one of those from a, from a, from a mage's tower. Anyway, hello, Thorsten Hartfang, with your screwed up pauldrons. God, that's annoying. What do you want, stranger? Why are you among the skull? I, I, I'm, I'm primarily right now, I'm wondering why on earth your, your pauldrons are screwed up, but... Are you sniffing me? Excuse me? Just one moment, folks. Apologies for the break there, folks. I was truly desperate for a drink. My throat was very dry, and it was making me want to cough, and it's fixed now. Unlike his pauldrons, they're definitely not fixed. Good grief. I'll have to Google that problem after I'm done here and try to figure out if there's a solution, because wow. The Skull wish you no harm for now, but we do not know you, and we have no reason to want to know you. Leave here until you have a reason to be among us. What? But, but I, but I do. I am confused. I have this horrible feeling that there was a piece of dialogue I didn't click on that I was supposed to click on when I was talking to Lucius. Oh, Morrowind. Why is your dialogue system so shite? Alright. <laughs> hey, mysticism is that at least. Right. <clears throat> Lucius. Apparently, I failed to click on something. Oh, this is so ridiculous. Find the captain. Nord Village. There it is. Your journal has been updated. Skull of a Skull Warrior has been entering retreat. Right, here we go. It's on the northeast. Right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pretend this happened earlier, okay? Pretend this happened a couple of episodes ago. We're just we're having a flashback right now is what's happening. Fathis is having a flashback as he enters the Great Hall to this conversation he had earlier with, uh... God, I'm not fooling anyone, am I? It's on the northeastern tip of Solthsine. The Skull are nature worshippers, and they seem to have a special communion with the island's creatures. If anyone knows what attacked the fort, it will be those Nords. I will mark the location on your map. I would like you to earn their trust and find out what you can. You may have to remain with them for many days, but I believe you are up to the task. Here, take this. It was found in one of their tombs. Perhaps they will take it as a sign of good faith. Skull of the Skull Warrior, there we go. Oh there, I come to speak with your people. I bring you the skull looted from one of the tombs of your people. I hope this endears me to you and does not make you want to grab your axe and chop my head off. Seems legit. Thank goodness for Mark and Recall, eh? Right. What ho, Thurston? I'm back. What do you want, stranger? The Skull wish you no harm, but you will find your manners while you are within our walls. We will make no exceptions. Now, what is this I hear about an attack on the Imperial Fort? Those soldiers. <laughs> They cut their trees and dig their holes and have little to show after a day's toil. They do not respect this land or its creatures, and for that I find them offensive. But, though I have no love for them, the Skarl would never do such a thing. We prefer to let the Imperials kill themselves slowly. These creatures that attacked, these were not wolves of this island. Now, have you finished your business here? You say you've brought the bones of one of our ancestors. Stupid Imperials. 
They need to learn to leave things as they are. Still, it is good that you have returned this to the Skarl. Perhaps there is hope for you and your kind. You are welcome here for the moment, but there is much to atone for. The Imperials in their fort have brought nothing but harm to these lands. They cut the trees and dig the earth. They are wasteful, lazy, and careless. They have no comprehension of the oneness of the land. It is this oneness from which the Skarl derive our strength, and the Imperials have defiled these lands. Oneness, eh? This is what gives the Skarl power. It is the balance of our lands, the trees and the waters, wolf and bear. The Imperials have no respect for this balance, and we pay the price. Mm -hmm. They defile the lands, you say. Through their carelessness, the Imperials are upset, have upset the natural order, the oneness of the land. This is their nature. It must be balanced once again, and the Allmaker appeased. I will wish... I wish for you to make these things right, Father Zulvin. You will be the one to restore the power of the Skarl. It is right that you do this. It is as your people who have caused the damage. My people, is it, eh? Do I look like an Imperial to you? Ugh. I don't think Fathis has ever missed the Ashlanders as much as he does right now. Uh, Speak with Corse Windai in the Shaman's Hut. He will give you further instructions. Okay. The Shaman. He should spend more time with Steel and less in studies. Still, he can provide good advice. Tell me about the Skull in general. We from birth all know the oneness of the land and are tied to it. The same blood flows in our veins. As chieftain, all Skull are bound to my heartstrings, and it is mine to protect them and avenge them. I see. What do you know about the Reeklings? I cannot count the number of them I have bloodied my axe with. They are creatures hardly worthy of a warrior's attention. Mindless beasts. Alright. Marisa? There is no Marisa around here. If she left the Imperial Cult Shrine and was headed north, she never made it this far. Yeah, we found her anyway, but I just wanted to ask out of curiosity. Rumors? As Chieftain of the Skarl, I will listen to rumors that may affect my people, but I do not spread them. No secret? Hardfang is no secret. My people say that I have the strength of the wild inside me, and so named me Hardfang. I'm Alexia? Just, just out of curiosity? Ooh! <laughs> Indeed. Right, so. You were told to perform the rituals needed to restore the power of the Skarl. What have you done? Nothing, because I've literally just taken two paces away from you. Alright. We must gain the trust of the Skarl. And in order to start doing that, we must speak with Corst Windai. He is the shaman in our village, and his wisdom is unparalleled. You will usually find him in the shaman's hut, though he often wanders our lands on his own business. If you have any questions, Windai would be good counsel. Good, and I believe we'll actually find him over here. Shaman's hut. Course, wind eye. Greetings. <clears throat> You're on your honor. Don't press your luck. Greetings to you, wanderer. Why have you come to our village? The attack on the Imperial Falls, why I've come. I can tell you no more about this. There's information. Hardfang will have it. I'm sorry I can do no more. You are course, wind eye. I am course, wind eye. How may I help you? Uh. I... well... I've come here because I seek to restore the power of the Skarl. Hardfang wishes for you to do this, does he? Then I will assist you. There is a ritual that must be completed. On Solstheim, you will find six standing stones, each representing one of the six gifts of the Allmaker. At each of these stones, a ritual must be completed. Once the ritual of the gifts is complete, the oneness should be restored. Ritual of the Gifts, eh? It would be too much for any knot of the Skarl to remember. Here, take this. 
It will explain the rituals and guide you on your way. This book may be of some use to you as well. If you are to remain with the skull, you should understand our beliefs. Okay, so he's given us the story of Avar Stone Singer and the locations of the stones. What about the oneness? There is a careful balance that lies in all things of this world. The animals, the trees, even the rocks and the winds. There is a harmony that the skull draw power from. By the grace of the Allmaker, he who gave us these gifts. When this balance is upset, our power is lessened. Oh, you see. Bunch of hippies. Okay. Ooh, do you know anything about werewolves? They are death-eyed, steel-thewed, fur-clad blocks of dark blocks? Blocks of darkness. Which know not light, nor sympathy, nor dreams, nor hope, nor beauty, nor anything except hunger and the satiating of hunger. Okay. I shall read these texts you have given me. As soon as I find them. Stock certificate, that is not it. Locations of the stones. It is a map. It's a map that I think I might dwell hotkey, actually. Forget Gothran's magical lamp. There we go. So I can now do that. Anytime I need it. Looking at a hotkey book item in this game. Very useful. So that's the old the wind stone, beast stone, water stone, tree stone, earth stone, and the sunstone. I believe we encountered the sunstone. When we were over there, did we not? It was up on a hill. And of course, the story of Ava Stone singing out. This is a bit of a read, if I recall. <clears throat> so, buckle in, folks. Where is it? What have you bloody done with it? The story of Ava Stone singing. Here we go. Sit quietly, child, and listen, for the story I tell you is a story of the ages. But what is it, Grandfather? Is it a story of heroes and beasts? The Grandfather looked patiently at the child. He was growing into a fine boy. Soon he would see the value in the stories and the lessons that were taught to each generation. Just listen, child. Let the story take root in your heart. In a time before now, long before now, when the skull were new, when there was peace in the land. The sun was hot and the crops grew long, and the people were happy in the peace that the Allmaker provided. But the skull grew complacent and lazy, and they took for granted the lands and all the gifts the Allmaker had given them. They forgot, or chose not to remember, that the adversary is always watching, and that he delights in tormenting the Allmaker and his chosen people. And so... It was that the adversary came to be among the skull. The adversary has many aspects. He appears in the unholy beasts and in the incurable plague. At the end of seasons, we will know him as Thartag, the world devourer. But in these ages, he came to be known as the greedy man. The greedy man, that is what we call him, for to speak his name would certainly bring ruin on the people, lived among the skull for many months. Perhaps... He was once just a man, but when the adversary entered into him, he became the greedy man, and that is how he is remembered. It came to be one day that the powers of the Scar left them. The strength left the arms of the warriors, and the shaman could no longer summon the beasts to their side. The elders thought that surely the Allmaker was displeased, and some suggested that the Allmaker had left them forever. It was then that the greedy man appeared to them, spoke. You of the skull have grown fat and lazy. I have stolen the gifts of your all-maker. I have stolen the oceans, so you will forever know thirst. I have stolen the lands and the trees and the sun, so your crops will wither and die. I have stolen the beasts, so you will go hungry. And I have stolen the winds, so you will live without the spirit of the all-maker. And until one of you can reclaim these gifts, the Skarl will live in misery and despair. For I am the greedy man, and that is my nature. 
and the greedy man disappeared. The members of the Skarl spoke for many days and nights. They knew that one of them must retrieve the gifts of the Allmaker, but they could not decide who it should be. I cannot go, said the Elder, for I must stay to lead the Skarl and tell our people what is the law. I cannot go, said the Warrior, for I must protect the Skarl. My sword will be needed in case the greedy man reappears. I cannot go, said the shaman, for the people need my wisdom. I must read the portents and offer my knowledge. It was then that a young man called Avar lifted his voice. He was strong of arm and fleet of foot, though he was not yet a warrior of the Skarl. I will go, said Avar, and the Skarl laughed. Hear me out, the boy continued. I am not yet a warrior, so my sword will not be needed. I cannot read the portents, so the people will not seek my counsel. And I am young, and not yet wise in the ways of the law. I will retrieve the gifts of the Allmaker from the greedy man. If I cannot, I will not be missed. The Skarl thought on this briefly, and decided to let Avar go. He left the village the next morning to retrieve the gifts. Avar first set out to retrieve the gift of water, so he travelled to the water stone. It was there the Allmaker first spoke to him. Travel west to the sea and follow the swimmer to the waters of life. So, Avar walked to the edge of the ocean, and there was the, there was the swimmer, a black hawker, sent from the Allmaker. The swimmer dove into the waters and swam very far and far again. Avar was strong though, and he swam hard. He followed the swimmer to a cave, swimming deeper and deeper, his lungs burning and his limbs exhausted. At last, he found a pocket of air, and there, in the dark, he found the waters of life. Gathering his strength, he took the waters and swam back to the shore. Upon returning to the waterstone, the Allmaker spoke. You have returned the gift of water to the Skarl. The oceans again will bear fruit, and their thirst will be quenched. Ava then travelled to the Earthstone, and there the Allmaker spoke to him again. Enter the cave of the hidden music, and hear the song of the Earth. So, Ava travelled north and east to the cave of hidden music. He found himself in a large cavern, where the rocks hung from the ceiling and grew from the ground itself. He listened there and heard the song of the earth, but it was faint. Grabbing up his mace, he struck the rocks of the floor in time with the song, and the song grew louder until it filled the cavern and his heart. Then he returned to the earth stone. The gift of the earth is with the skull again, said the Allmaker. The lands are rich again and will bear life. Avar was tired as the sun burned him. The trees offered no shade, and there was no wind to cool him. Still, he travelled on to the beast rock, and the Allmaker spoke. Find the good beast and ease his suffering. Avar travelled through the woods of the in in Isenfir for many hours until he heard the cries of a bear from over a hill. As he crested a hill, he saw the bear, a falmer's arrow piercing its neck. He checked the woods for the falmer, for that is what they were, though some may say they are not. And finding none, approached the beast. He spoke soothing words and came upon it slowly, saying, Good beast, I mean you no harm. The Allmaker has sent me to ease your suffering. Hearing these words, the bear ceased its struggles and laid its head at Avar's feet. Avar grasped the arrow and pulled it from the bear's neck. Using the little nature magic he knew, Avar tended the wound, though it took the last bit of his strength. As the bear's wound closed, Avar slept. When he awoke, the bear stood over him, and the remains of a number of the farmer were strewn about. He knew that the good beast had protected him during the night. He travelled back to the beast rock, the bear by his side, and the Allmaker spoke to him again. You have returned the gift of the beasts. Once again, the good beasts will feed the Skarl when they are hungry, clothe them when they are cold, and protect them in times of need. Avar's strength had returned. 
So he traveled on to the tree stone, through, though the good beast did not follow him. When he arrived, the All Father spoke to him. The All Father? Not the All Maker? Okay, whatever. <laughs> the first trees are gone and must be replanted. Find the seed and plant the first tree. Ava traveled again through the Hirstang forest, searching for the seeds of the first tree, but he could find none. Then he spoke to the tree spirits, the living trees. They told him that the seeds had been stolen by one of the Falmer, for they are the servants of the adversary. And this Falmer was hiding them deep in the forest so that none would ever find them. Avar traveled to the deepest part of the forest. And there he found the evil Falmer, surrounded by the lesser tree spirits. Avar could see that the spirits were in his thrall, that he had used the magic of the seeds and spoken their secret name. Avar knew he could not stand against such a force, and that he must retrieve the seeds in secret. Avar reached into his pouch and drew out his flint. Gathering leaves, he started a small fire outside the clearing where the Falmer and the ensorcelled spirits milled. All the Skarl know the spirits' hatred of fires, for the fires ravage the trees they serve. At once, the nature of the spirits took hold, and they rushed to quell the flames. During the commotion, Avar snuck behind the farmer and snatched the pouch of seeds, stealing away before the evil being knew they were gone. When Avar returned to the tree stone, he planted the tree in the ground, and the Allmaker spoke to him. The gift of trees is restored. Once again, the trees and plants will bloom and grow, and provide nourishment and shade. Avar was tired, for the sun would only burn and the winds would not yet cool him, but he rested briefly in the shade of the trees. His legs were weary and his eyes heavy, but he continued on, traveling to the sunstone. Again, the Allmaker spoke. The gentle warmth of the sun is stolen, so now it only burns. Free the sun from the halls of Penumbra. And so, Avar walked west, over the frozen lands, until he reached the halls of Penumbra. The air inside was thick and heavy, and he could see no farther than the end of his arm. Still, he felt his way along the walls, though he heard the shuffling of feet and knew that this place held the unholy beasts who would tear his flesh and eat his bones. For hours he crept along until he saw a faint glow far at the end of the hall. There, from behind a sheet of perfect ice, came a glow so bright he had to shut his eyes, lest they be forever blinded. He plucked the flaming eye from one of the unholy beasts and threw it at the ice with all his might. A small crack appeared in the ice, then grew larger. Slowly, the light crept out between the cracks, widening them, splitting the ice wall into pieces. With a deafening crack, the wall crumbled, and the light rushed over Avar and through the halls. He heard the shrieks of the unholy beasts as they were blinded and burned. He ran out of the halls following the light and collapsed on the ground outside. When he was able to rise again, the sun again warmed him, and he was glad for that. He travelled back to the sunstone where the Allmaker spoke to him. The gift of the sun is the Skarls once again. It will warm them and give them light. Ava had one final gift he had to recover, the gift of the winds. So he traveled to the Windstone, far on the western coast of the island. When he arrived, the Allmaker spoke to him, giving him his final task. Find the greedy man and release the wind from its captivity. So, Avar wandered the land in search of the greedy man. He looked in the trees, but the greedy man did not hide there. Nor did he hide near the oceans or the deep caves, and the beasts had not seen him in the dark forests. Finally, Avar came to a crooked house, and he knew here he would find the greedy man. Who are you, shouted the greedy man, that you would come to my house? I am Avar of the Skarl, said Avar. I am not warrior, shaman, or elder. If I do not return, I will not be missed. 
But I have returned the oceans and the earth, the trees, the beasts, and the sun. And I will return the winds to my people, that we may feel the spirit of the Allmaker in our souls again. And with that, he grabbed up the greedy man's bag and tore it open. The winds rushed out with gale force, sweeping the greedy man up and carrying him off far from the island. Avar breathed in the winds and was glad. He walked back to the windstone, where the Allmaker spoke to him a final time. You have done well, Avar. You, the least of the Skarl, have returned my gifts to them. The greedy man is gone for now, and should not trouble your people again in your lifetime. Your Allmaker is pleased. Go now, and live according to your nature. And Avar started back to the Skarl village. And then what happened, Grandfather? What do you mean, child? He went home. No, when he returned to the village, the child continued. Was he made a warrior, or taught the ways of the shaman? Did he lead the Skarl in battle? I do not know. That is where the story ends, said the Grandfather. But that is not an ending. That is not how stories end. The old man laughed and got up from his chair. Is it not? That was a lot of reading. My goodness. But, ladies and gents, that was the tale of Avar Stonesinger. And so, with the locations of the stones in our hands, we must do what Avar Stonesinger once did. We must reenact his pilgrimage of sorts. Well, these were hollyberries, but apparently they're not. That is what we must do. Window has given me a scroll that shows the location of each of the standing stones, as well as the book that gives the history of the Skarl's beliefs. I should investigate these stones, if I am to restore the power of the Skarl. Right, yeah, we will need to visit each of these stones and perform a ritual, much as the fabled Avar Stonesinger did. And I think, I truly believe that I, to, to really get into the spirit of things and do this properly, we should do it in the same order that Avar Stonesinger did it. So, I believe that means we'll be starting with the ocean, the water stone, the ocean stone, whatever it's called. Let's have a little look here. Where did he go first? Right, yeah, here we go. Travel to the Waterstone. So, the Waterstone, we will find to the west over here. I believe this here is, a, these, these lines are rivers. That, there is Lake Fjolding. We should be roughly about there-ish then in that case. Which means that we need to go west right across the island, staying south of these mountains. And then if we do that, we shall eventually find the water stone. Again, I can't see the damn indicator on the minimap. Right, they're roughly in this sort of direction. Okay. Well. Without further ceremony, I suppose off we go. Look at that view. Look at that view impressive by the standards of its day at least of course it didn't have distant land like this when it came out but uh, it's one of those things it's sort of cool that it's all there that 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 awesome view was there this whole time and nobody knew until they added distant land to the game same deal with Daggerfall Unity actually I'm not the greatest fan of Daggerfall as many of you watching this are aware but Daggerfall Unity is impressive, mostly because it adds distant terrain. And you get to see that truly gigantic Daggerfall map in the distance. In a way that you never could in the original. And it's super impressive. Oh my goodness me, this is not good! The quest so far is not going well, is it? <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. God, give me a restore health, come on. Do I have an exclusive? I do. 
That'll do the trick. Oh my god, my guys killed me first. I need to right, hold on. Necromancer's command. Oh, I completely forgot I had that. I might make use of it right now, in fact. But first. Later, later, dudes. Getting out of there. I always forget I have Necromancer's command. There we go. Give in. You're dead already. You guys can start fighting anytime you like. stick around for 60 seconds that's not bad it's a once per day power but you know not bad <laughs> that squirrel <laughs> well done minions don't do that again oh she's got nothing particularly useful aside from that valuable longsword I wonder if she doesn't actually wear the item she has on her. It's a bit odd. Anyway. Uh, you don't mind if I just... Oh, you've gone. Never mind. Where is that squirrel? <laughs> I'm drain its life force. There you are. There we go. Squirrel-based healing, ladies and gentlemen. A silver tail, it's called. Anyway, onwards. Let us continue. <laughs> Who are these folks up here? You have no business being here, stranger. Leave now. What about you? Raring. We'll have no dealings with the likes of you. Be gone. And you, Aenor? Could you, could you stop for just a second? Be gone, stranger. All right, I'm sensing a theme. Nobody in here? Except for a bunch of clothes I could steal, I suppose, and a huntsman's axe. Again, nice addition to the game. Uh, totally rubbish, though, by this by, by, when, by the time you've got to a character with this level. But nice that it's there, I suppose. It's a peculiar thing, isn't it? Like, I, on the one hand, it's great that they didn't they didn't uh, make this scale to your level. Oh look, there's a cave over there. I totally missed that. I was topping around it that entire time, fighting the berserkers, and I never actually noticed the cave entrance. Anyway. But yeah, no, it's sort of on the one hand it's great that they didn't they didn't level scale it so that it represents a serious challenge. On the other hand, it does mean that a lot of the items you come across are a bit useless. Solzheim Rimhull. Whoa, hello. Skeleton Berserker, eh? More Skeleton Berserkers. Right, you know what? Skeleton Berserkers? Meat? Where is it? Meat? Meat? Damn it, I can't find it. Ah! The skeleton army. Hello, one's, one's got three. Man, whatever they hit me with is not going away anytime soon. Drain health. Oh, it's it's the belt that does it, right. I forgot about that. Who are you? Timball? 
Intruder, who dares venture so deeply into the halls of Remhal? The mantle of woe is mine, do you hear? I have claimed the robe and its power. Mantle of woe? Be all the vestments I now wear. When I read the old stories, I had to learn the truth. Could it be? Could it be that an item of such grand magicka lay so close at hand in the caves beneath my very village? I could contain my eagerness no longer and jumped into the well. I braved Rimhull's dangers and at last my efforts were rewarded. Soon the dead shall walk and Timval the dark shall lead them. <laughs> I too practice the dark arts. Let me join with you. Together we shall bring death and fire to the worms of salt time. Very tempting. Also tempting to just leave, honestly. I too practice the dark arts, as you can clearly see. Fool, such power cannot be shared. I alone shall wear the mantle of woe. I alone am master of the dead. I shall slay you and add your corpse to my ranks. Will you indeed? You will die where you stand. Alright. This should be amusing. Who is the greater necromancer now, eh? Sorry, don't it fit me with your curse? What curse? Go on, skeletons, I believe in you. Are they fighting each other now? Oh no, that was his skeleton. Well done, minions. Timbal is dead, and the mantle of woe is now ours. Should we wish to take it? It drains personality 100 points on self. Weakness to normal weapons, 20% or so. Fortify Mexican Magicka five times your intelligence score on self, however. But also sun damage, 20%, 20 points on self. And fortify conjuration, 20 points on self. It's a crazy bit of kit, the old mantle of woe. Slightly bonkers bit of equipment, this. Quite, quite mad. But, look what it's done to my Magicka. 624 Magicka now. Now imagine if you were playing a High Elf with the Atronarch birth sign on top of that. This, this robe would give you a preposterous amount of Magicka. The downside, of course, is you have zero personality you, and you can't go out in sunlight. So, and you're weak to normal weapons as well. So it's it's but it's 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 a very fun and weird and unique item. I will be not wearing it right now, but I shall definitely be keeping it. Now the funny thing about Timbal here is, and I can say this now, having done this, now this is over. <clears throat> but where's my belt of the unarmored? Where is it? Where is it? Where's my belt of the unarmored? Where is it gone? There it is. Uh, Timvor, here, there's multiple ways of dealing with him, as you saw from the dialogue there, but also, and I was only remembering this after, as I was speaking to him, but, you could actually be sort of set onto this path down here to meet Timvor by an NPC in the village above. I didn't, uh, hello. I didn't hang around in the Skull Village to ask for any side quest or anything. Perhaps I should have, because there is a side quest that leads you down here. Because Timbal is the son of one of the villagers who lives up above. Oh, and Morrowind's crashed. Brilliant. Thanks. Um, well, okay. Depending on when I last quick saved, we might, we might do this differently. 